Throughout this video, we will share some basic information about the autofill recycler system, as well as safety procedures, required tools and materials, machine setup, proper tire filling techniques, and machine shutdown and cleanup. Ensure you have the necessary equipment required for the tire fill flat proofing pumping system at your location, including a flat proofing log for record keeping, a cleaning solvent such as 99% isopropyl alcohol, tools, rags for cleanup, and safety items such as safety glasses and chemically resistant gloves, a fire extinguisher, tire safety cage, first aid kit with eye wash station, and safety data sheets. Due to the combustible materials you will be handling, there should be no smoking, grinding, or open flames in the workspace with signs posted. And spectators should be carefully monitored. Refer to the OSHA guidelines for additional safety information. Compliance is unique at each location and should be in accordance with all local, state, and federal regulations. Flat-proofing materials should be stored indoors in a controllable environment at 72 degrees Fahrenheit or warmer. Never store flat-proofing materials outside. Prior to processing, the materials must be at least 72 degrees Fahrenheit to ensure proper mixing curing times. During cold weather processing, allow for extra curing time. 24 to 48 hours is recommended. When moving the equipment or changing totes, care must be given to keep the hoses on the correct side. TireFill's isocide product is sensitive to moisture. It requires the use of a desiccant to remove any moisture from the air as it enters the tote. To install the desiccant cartridge, simply peel off the tabs on both sides of the canister. On the canister, there is an arrow which indicates the direction of airflow. The arrow must be pointed towards the tote. Remove the white 2-inch setter bong on the isocide tote. Grease the threads of the desiccant holder and screw the assembly into the center opening. Place the filter in the desiccant holder and tighten the hose clamp. Make sure the inspection window is visible from the front of the tote. Change the cartridge when the inspection window turns pink. When hooking up new totes, inspect the ball valve for damage that may have occurred during shipping. Remove the shipping cap and foil seal and apply a thin coat of grease to tote connector. Screw the tote connector onto the ball valve. Hand tighten only. Apply grease to the tote connector and inside of the cam lock. Then connect the cam lock to the tote connector locking the cam lock in place by pulling back on the handles and inserting the pins. Repeat this procedure for the other tote. The inside of the tire must be cleaned and dried. Water, sealants, glycol, calcium chloride, soaps, bead lubricants, or even dirt must be removed from the tire. If the tire is rinsed, the inside of the tire must be dried prior to flat proofing. Wheels should be inspected for cracks, metal fatigue, and corrosion. Bent, cracked, or rusted wheels are a safety hazard and should not be used. New tires should be pre-stretched by inflating to operating pressure for 24 hours at 72 degrees Fahrenheit before filling. Pre-stretching the tire ensures that it will be filled to its capacity and will minimize long-term carcass growth during service. Used tires do not need to be pre-stretched and will take more flat-proofing product than a new tire. The best results and value are obtained when flat-proofing new tires. The tire fill flat proofing material is injected into the tire through the valve system. At the same time, air is removed or vented through an opening or needle at the 12 o'clock position. Liquid flat proofing material fills the inside cavity of the tire. When the tire is full, the hole is plugged with a bolt or screw. The tire is then pressurized for the correct application. The valve system is then sealed and the tire is laid flat to cure. After 24 to 48 hours, the solid elastomer is formed. The tire is now permanently flat-proofed and can be put into service. Flat-proof tires are pressurized not with air but with flat-proofing material. It is important that before you begin flat-proofing, you know the operating pressure of the tire. If you are uncertain about the pressure, refer to the manufacturer's data book or the yearbook by the Tire and Rim Association. Never pressurize the tire above the maximum pressure as indicated on the sidewall, rim, or wheel rating. There is a fundamental difference between pressurizing a tire with air and pressurizing a tire with tire fills flat proofing materials. Gases are compressible, liquids are not. Pressurizing a tire with air is a gradual process, with pressure building slowly from the initial introduction of air. 
With tire fill's flat proofing process, the tire is vented during the filling procedure so there is little pressure buildup until the tire is totally filled. Then the pressure builds up rapidly while pumping a very small additional amount of material. Tire fill has a flat proofing weight chart in addition to an online flat proofing estimator to help you approximate weight and cost for flat proofing tires. This information will be useful as it helps you determine if you have enough material to do the job and you can monitor the progress of each tire as it is filled. In addition, you are provided with an operator's manual. Please keep your manual handy so you will have access to more detailed information as well as troubleshooting. The auto fill recycler system grinds chunks of used tire fill into a very fine granulate. The computer-controlled system meters and mixes amounts of virgin liquid tire fill and granulated tire fill into a homogeneous mixture that fills the tire exactly the same as virgin liquid tire fill. Depending on the application, you can control the amount of granulate that is in the mix using up to 65% cured tire fill. Used tire fill chunks should typically be cut into 12-inch sections. It is important to properly inspect the chunk fill prior to depositing it into the machine to ensure no metals are present. It is also important that the chunk is dry and at room temperature prior to grinding. In addition, debris such as rocks, wood, or plastic should also be removed. Use the metal detecting wand to further inspect the chunk to ensure no metals are present. Fill the hopper area with chunk up to the top of the front side of the auto fill recycler. Turn the machine on and select Grinder. When at least half of the front hopper is filled with granulate, turn the machine off at the control panel. Remove the manifold head, mixing component, and fluid gun from the solvent container and wipe off any excess solvent with a dry rag. Visually check to ensure all items are free of residue. Using the one half inch mixing tube, insert three elements. Position the mixing tube with the tapered end down and insert the flat end of the first element into the mixing tube, stopping one inch from the top. Next, insert the second element into the notch of the first element and push down. Repeat the procedure for the third and fourth element. Do not use broken elements. Always keep an extra set of elements on hand. Dry the solvent from the ends of the mixing tube and whip hose and apply Teflon tape to the threads. Attach the mixing tube to the coupler on the manifold head and tighten. Attach the whip hose and tighten all connections. Apply a coat of grease to the quick connects on the manifold handle. Holding the manifold handle in one hand, pull up on the female quick connects. Attach the manifold into the handle and press down until it locks in place. Attach the whip hose to the injector barrel. Tighten this connection with a wrench. Open the white 2-inch bong to vent the cat side tote. Open the ball valves on the ISO and cat side totes. Turn the machine on and choose the 40-60 mix ratio. Jog the grinder for 15 seconds using the Jog Grinder Forward button and run or jog the mixture through the injector until it flows freely. If this step is not followed, the dried material can possibly plug the fill hose and back up the autofill recycler. Ensure that both granulate and virgin tire fill are extruded properly into a container. Then stop the autofill by pressing the Stop button. First, connect the sample valve assembly to the injection barrel. Connect the fill hose to the sample valve assembly. Hand tighten only. It is important not to over tighten the fill hose. Place a disposable container under the sample valve assembly. Connect the gun body to the other end of the hose. If the fill gun plunger isn't already attached to the gun body, attach it now. Next, attach the gauge assembly. Hold the fill hose over a suitable container and run the mixture through the entire fill hose and gun to ensure proper flow. Here we use the foot switch to run the machine. 
The tires should be safely placed in the tire cage with the air water valve in the 6 o'clock position. Next, verify the tire manufacturer's recommended PSI prior to filling. Remove the air water valve. Attach the gun connector to the base of the air water valve system. Press the air water valve into the gun and pull back on the plunger. Attach the fluid gun to the gun connector. Select the desired mix ratio on the autofill control panel. This is determined by the application for which the tire will be used. Press start on the control panel and begin filling the tire. While the tire is filling, continue loading chunk into the hopper. This is very important to maintain proper granulated levels. After you have filled the hopper area with chunk, stop the autofill machine. Check the tire pressure. When you reach 30% of the maximum tire pressure, stop filling the tire and drill a vent hole with a 3 8 inch drill bit or larger at the 12 o'clock position in the tread area of the tire. For steel belted tires and thick casings greater than 12 ply, you will need to drill a 1 8 inch hole through the tire to assist needle insertion. Then continue filling the tire. Constantly monitor the vent hole, checking for escaping air. Once the tire is full, air will no longer escape and material will begin flowing from the vent hole. Press stop on the control panel or take your foot off of the foot switch. Insert a screw or bolt into the vent hole to seal it. Check the tire pressure reading. Next, go to the control panel and press the 40-60 ratio button and press start. Continue filling the tire until the tire manufacturer's recommended PSI has been reached. Once the recommended PSI has been achieved, stop the autofill machine and press the plunger down to reinsert the valve core. To ensure proper seating of the valve core, pull back on the plunger and check the pressure on the PSI gauge. The PSI gauge should read zero. Disconnect the fill gun from the air water valve and remove the tire from the cage. Carefully lay the tire horizontally for proper curing. Allow the tire fill mixture to cure inside of the tire for at least 24 to 48 hours in a climate-controlled environment with a minimum temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Begin by pressing the emergency stop button. Put the manifold handle in the closed position. Next, hook up the air hose to the manifold. Then place the fill hose into a waste container. Slowly open the ball gauge valve on the manifold to blow mixed tire fill material from the mixing tube barrel, fill hose, and fill gun. Be careful while performing this task as it can create a mess. Remove the fill hose from the sample valve and allow it to drain into a suitable container. Remove the sample valve from the injection barrel. Next, release the emergency stop on the control panel. Run only the grind and injector until you have dry material exiting the barrel. Then press the emergency stop and turn the machine off at the main power source. Thoroughly clean the sample valve with the brush and store in alcohol. Remove the PSI gauge from the gun assembly. Clean the diaphragm thoroughly with the brush and 99% isopropyl alcohol. Store in a safe place. Clean the fill gun plunger. Store in alcohol. Thoroughly clean the gun body, rinse and store all parts in alcohol. To clean the fill hose, put a cap on one end and fill with alcohol. Next, put a cap on the other end of the hose. With a cleaning motion, move the hose back and forth to agitate the alcohol inside. After a minute of agitation, remove one of the capped ends and drain the hose. Then refill the hose a second time with alcohol. Replace the cap and store in a safe place for future use.
Start by removing the IC delivery whip hose from the injection barrel. Remove the manifold head from the manifold hand valve. Remove the whip hose from the mixing tube. Disconnect the mixing tube from the manifold head, leaving the coupler on the head. With the ejection rod, remove the mixing elements from the tube. Lay the whip hose in solvent and clean the sample drain valve with the brush. Make sure the sample drain valve is open. Clean the mixing tube with a brush. Place the mixing tube in the solvent. Clean the mixing elements in the solvent and store them in a safe place to avoid breakage. Open the manifold head pressure gauge valve and clean the manifold head connectors. Store the manifold head in the solvent. Clean the gun stem connector and store in solvent. The mixing components and whip hose must remain in the flush bucket during storage. The solvent level must be high enough to completely cover all items. Thoroughly clean the IC hand check valve using the brush to clean the inside of the connectors. Grease the ISO side connector and cover with a cap. Keep all solvents covered when not in use. Last, turn off both tote valves and turn off at the main power source. To ensure that the material does not solidify in the hoses and cylinders between uses, the pump needs to be operated once a week. Congratulations! You have successfully shut down and cleaned the autofill recycler system. These important steps will allow you to be prepared and ready for the next time you want to fill a tire.